I'm Adam Blevins, and welcome to my series, Groove Breakdowns. In this series, I dissect one of my favorite drum grooves and show you how to play it one step at a time. Today, we're looking at the drum groove from the Paul Simon song, Late in the Evening. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and hang out while we get ready to dive into Steve Gadd's four-stick Mozambique. As I said in the intro, today we're looking at Steve Gadd's Four Stick Mozambique from the Paul Simon song Late in the Evening. A full discussion of the Mozambique style is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. However, you should know that the Cuban Mozambique was invented by musician Pedro Izquierda in 1963. He came up with this style by combining traditional African-influenced bell patterns with Cuban rhythms from the popular dance styles of the day. The version that we're looking at is what I would call a New York Mozambique. This type of Mozambique was inspired by Izquierda's original stylings, but it has its own flair that was added to it in the New York club scene of the 1960s. Also, this groove is a good introduction into the world of linear drumming. If you're approaching the intermediate levels of study and you're through with all the basic drum grooves and you're looking for something a little bit more challenging, this is a great next step to take. The hand patterns can be a little bit challenging at first, but the foot patterns are solid and consistent and give you a really good groundwork so you can just work mainly on the hands. Also, grooves like these are one of the main reasons that you should practice out of the book Stick Control by George Stone, um, as if you're familiar with the first couple of pages of that book, grooves like this will come a lot easier to you. So let's jump right in. We're going to start with the right hand part, which is an African influenced bell pattern. You can play this either on the rim of a drum or on a bell sound, such as a ride cymbal or the ride bell or a cowbell. The bell pattern is heavily syncopated, so I highly recommend practicing this with a metronome, and it goes like this. Again, this one may be a little bit tricky at first, but you should practice it with a metronome until you're really solid with it and all those 16th notes are in the right place. Next, we're going to take a look at the left hand pattern and there are a few different ways that you can interpret this. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different variations on the basic left hand pattern from the Mozambique. So this is inspired by an African djembe or a Cuban conga pattern. Um, and again, like I said, there are a couple of different ways that you can go with this one. So the eventual goal is to be able to improvise over this and kind of come up with your own ideas. Now we're going to try to put both of the hands together. So we're going to play that bell pattern in the right hand while playing several different of the left hand patterns. That goes like this. You might have an easier time playing both hands together. I know that I do. It's a little bit trickier for me with patterns like this to learn them one hand at a time. Um, in my experience, most people have an easier time learning it that way. But if you struggle with learning the right hand and left hand patterns separately, try doing them both together and you might have a little bit easier time. Now that the hard part's out of the way, all we have to do is add the feet. And all we're going to do is play quarter notes with our right foot and left foot, right foot on bass drum, left hand on hi-hat, just playing quarter notes at the same time. As I 
said in the beginning, we are going to learn the four-stick Mozambique. When Steve Gadd originally recorded this, and in the performances that I've seen of him playing this live, he always uses two sticks in each hand. He does this to further drive home the African feel of the song, because it gives the impression that there is a percussion section playing instead of just one drummer. It sounds like there's more than one person playing at a time. So in the videos that I've seen of Steve Gadd playing this, he holds two sticks in his hand, just like he would hold one drumstick, like this. I've always had a little bit of trouble with this, uh, getting that technique down just right, so whenever I played this song, I use a marimba grip, a four mallet marimba grip that I learned when I was in college. So if you have some experience with four mallet marimba or vibraphone, you might want to try one of those grips. The one that I use is the Musser Stevens grip. Only try one of these if you're trained in four mallet marimba or vibraphone. Otherwise, I think holding two sticks in one hand will definitely be easier. But whenever I play it, I like to do it like this. recommendation for this groove again is to practice it with a metronome make sure that all of the constituent parts are really solid and you understand the rhythm and you understand where each note should go in the beat learn several different variations then try to gain fluidity by switching back and forth between the different variations on the fly and eventually you can start improvising with your left hand and coming up with your own rhythms that fit the style of music and that about covers it if you got something out of this video don't forget to hit the like button um, subscribe it, share it if you uh, know of someone else that might get something out of this. And also be sure to check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Blevins Percussion. Uh, even if you only pledge $1 a month, every little bit helps. So if you got some value out of this, please consider giving some value back. Uh, for just $5 a month, you'll get each video one week before it goes live to the general, general public. And for $10, you'll receive PDF transcriptions of all of the exercises that I do in each video. For this particular video, um, I've not only included all of the musical examples that I've used here, but I've also got a couple of extra patterns uh, just for a little bit of extra practice. And if there are any other grooves that you'd like me to cover, any other Steve Gadd or Afro-Cuban stuff, or any, uh, any songs at all that you'd like me to take on, feel free to tell me about it in the comments below, and I'll see about doing that in the future. That about covers it. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.